tune in to WDBX 91.1 FM every Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The Lonesome Roy's Radio Hoedown. In the first hour, Roy's going to play all your favorite honky tunes. Mountain music. And western swing. And in the second hour, there'll be live local music right here in the studio. With bands like us, Bosco. And White Ford. It's Lonesome, Lonesome Roy's. It's lonesome, lonesome roids. Lonesome roids, radio hold down. Tune in to WDBX 91.1 FM every Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. for Lonesome Roy's Radio Hoedown. In the first hour, Roy's going to play all your favorite honky tonks. Mountain music. And western swing. And in the second hour, there'll be live local music right here in the studio. With bands like us, Bosco. And White Ford. It's Lonesome, Lonesome Roy's. Lonesome Roy's Radio Hoedown. On WDBX. Yeah. 91.1. Good Monday morning. This is Talk of the Town on WDBX FM Carbondale. We hope you're having a great Monday. It's feeling a little bit more like spring out there than the end of July. Mm-hmm. It's hard to believe that we're already talking about back to school. We do have Daniel Booth in studio, the new superintendent of District 95. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to meet with us this hey, morning. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Always good to come to Talk of the Town. And you have officially been in the position for almost a month now. Um, it's probably been kind of a whirlwind. It has been a whirlwind. You know, uh, Carbondale Elementary School District 95 is the biggest district in Carbondale, so we've got more employees, we've got more kids, uh, we've got more miles to cover, and it feels like I've been covering all of them over the last three weeks. It's been good, though. Good work. What types of changes can people expect to see this year? You know, right now I am really trying to focus on culture and climate. I want people to feel welcome when they come in our buildings. I want um, our students to have smiles on their faces. I want them to be challenged in the classroom. Um, And I want our teachers and our staff to really feel like um, their work is appreciated. Um, That work environment leads to change automatically, so that's the biggest thing we're working on right now. And what types of things have you been doing in the last couple of weeks? I know I've seen a lot of posts on social media of you kind of going around to all the different buildings, meeting with a lot of the faculty and staff. Yeah, that's been the biggest thing. Uh, Last week I spent a lot of time in our buildings, um, just looking at our infrastructure. Um, We have amazing, amazing schools. I have been um, shocked at just the condition of the buildings. Um, We've got some updates that have taken place over the last 10 years that our buildings are are just flat-out state-of-the-art. We'll also be doing some renovations to a couple of our buildings. Our enrollment is actually rising, Um, so we're going to work on adding classrooms um, here in the next couple of years. We'll have some portable classrooms classrooms going on this year from a, for a temporary um, space for our students. But, um, you know, just even walking through that middle school and comparing it to um, the facilities at the high school, um, they're comparable. Um, I am confident that there isn't another middle school in Southern Illinois um, that looks like Carbondale Middle School. So um, we're going to work to get more people in there to see it. Um, we're going to work to make sure that they continue to uh, be state-of-the-art. And um, we want to be good stewards of, um, you know, the taxes that our community pays and the finances that are coming in. And we want to make sure that's something our community is proud of. And I'm sure walking into this, um, there's a big, long checklist of 
things to do. Um, but ultimately, what is your goal when those students walk into your buildings come a couple weeks from now? Yeah, so students come back. The first day for them is August 15th. Teachers come back August 13th. So we literally are two weeks away uh, from teachers touching the doors and about uh, two, uh, two weeks and a couple of days from students coming in. Um, and our biggest goal is to be organized on that first day. We want every student to know where they need to go, and we want them to be greeted with a smile. Um, I know you're going to talk to uh, Pastor Swims in a little bit, you know, and about his backpack giveaway, and they usually give over about a 1,000 uh, backpacks away. So we know they'll have supplies um, because the community supports, you know, our schools. But uh, we want to make sure that our students are prepared for the day and that our teachers are happy to see them, and uh, they're greeted with a smile every day. Um, a lot of, you know, we, when we deal in our communities where we have a, um, a percentage of poverty that takes place, we want to make sure our students have good meals every day. So we have a fresh fruits and vegetables grant um, at our Parish and Thomas schools where every single day they'll get fresh fruit and vegetables every single day. And we um, work to get that locally. Um, and other than that, you know, them getting breakfast, lunch, and snack is a big deal. Um, so I, we know our students are looking forward to that, and we're looking forward to giving it to them. And I'm sure it's kind of an interesting perspective for you after spending so many years at the high school and now kind of seeing where all those students came from before they got to your building. That was the number one motivation for me going to Carbondale Elementary School District. Um, if there's one thing that I learned over 12 years at Carbondale Community High School, it's the fact that if there's ever going to be real change in the Carbondale community, it's going to start at Carbondale Elementary School District. Um, we did a lot of great work at the high school, and they're going to continue that work. The infrastructure is set there to continue to succeed. Um, but the fact of the matter is a lot of the work that we do at the high school is reactive. Um, we get them at the age of 14, and a lot of times their path is set, and we you know, do all we can to get them to where um, their potential will take them. But at the elementary district, we're actually laying a foundation and building on top of it. Um, so if we can do that from the pre-K on, um, you know, the the city of Carbondale will reap the benefits. It's going to take some time, but it's going to be hard work, but it's going to be good work, and we're going to do it. And what do you think your biggest challenge is to, uh, you know, achieve that long-term goal? You know what, I think... Um, it's communication. I think that the, the district doesn't have a um, history of communicating well with the community and with parents and letting them know how they can get involved and what their role is in their child's education. Um, and when I compare high school and middle school, again, or elementary district, um, at the high school, you're kind of like trying to pull families into the building and you know because kids are they're they're becoming young adults at the elementary level it's usually supposed to be the opposite you're trying to push people out you know like they're, they'll be fine they'll be fine and um, I think we have to make sure that we have parent involvement um, because although school is a major part of the day it's not the biggest part of the day um, they're spending about six seven hours at school and they're spending 16 or 18 hours at home. Uh, so that home uh, education has to be a priority as we move forward. Um, just teaching kids how to read, um, teaching them to um, to respond to adults or even to um, handle adversity, those are skills that happen at home. Um, I've got a two-year-old. You know, we're teaching her right now how to say yes and no, and she knows how to say no, you know, pretty pretty, pretty often, but, you know, appropriate times to do it. And um, how to advocate for herself is, is a big deal, and those are skills that as educators we've got to um, dig into early on. And as far as staffing, have you made any big staffing changes within the district leading up to the August start date? Yeah, so we, um, I mean, we've hired this year over 20 new teachers um, in the school district, uh, which has been exciting for us. Um, it's been exciting because one of our biggest goals is to change culture, you know, and um, to have new employees come in. And I really believe, and I've always felt this at the high school, but it's been even more evident at the elementary district. Number one priority whenever you're managing an organization is to hire well. I'm not going to be in every single classroom, um, but we've got to have good teachers in those classrooms that love our kids. And um, we've done that. We've got a good crew of teachers coming in. Uh, we made some um, principal changes as far as just moving them to uh, other buildings in the district to make sure that our alignment of curriculum is horizontal and vertical. Um, so, you know, our um, the, our principal who was at the 6-8 building is going to the 4-5 building. She, before Marilyn Ross, before going to the 6-8 building, she was actually at our 2-3 building. So now that she's placed in that 4-5 building, she has the ability to recognize where students are coming from and also where they're going uh, from being there. 
there. Um, our principal who uh, was at the 4-5 building, Chris Uffelman, is moving to the 2-3 building. So once again, her conversation when she's in that building is, hey, guys, this is where we're taking our kids. This is what they need to know when they go to Lewis School, our 4-5 building. And our principal in our 2-3 building um, is going to um, the Carbondale Middle School. And she has uh, 12 or 14 years of middle school experience um, in the St. Louis and East St. Louis area, um, an area who has received a lot of professional development and a lot of understanding of how to, how to use data to implement change in, in school districts. Um, so, you know, we feel like we've made some good changes that are more strategic, that are placing people in positions where they can succeed um, and where they can lead well. Um, and that's a big deal. Our principles are a big key to everything we do. Right. And um, I guess it's only up <coughs> from here. Well, that's the goal. You know, um, you know, I've been very intentional with communicating with the community where the district is right now. Um, you know, the, the state is really changing the way that schools are evaluated. Um, there was a time where it was a name and shame mentality where you got this score and we're putting you on this list and you just need to get better. And the state is really moving to a model of um, identifying schools and supporting them. So they're really putting their money where their mouth is. If they see a school that is struggling, they identify you and then they ask you to go through a comprehensive needs assessment to figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. And they'll give you the funding to to grow. Um, so that's a big deal. The other big thing that the state is focusing on that we'll also focus on as a district is a mindset of equity, not equality, equity, not giving everybody the same thing, but giving people what they need, giving students what they need. Um, and in a community like Carbondale, where we're uh, diverse, um, where we hang our hat on our diversity, that's a flag that we wave and we wave it proudly. Um, it's important that we recognize any inequities that are out there so that the specific student groups that um, need more are getting more. And once again, our district is supporting that and our state is supporting that. Um, and we're going to uh, we're going to turn this thing around. And I'm looking forward to it. One of the things I was going to ask you is um, certainly that there's there's a lot of emphasis on the importance of uh, having strong schools in a community to have a to have the you know, a great community. Right. And mm -hmm. a community that people are want to move to. Um, and 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 that usually that 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 conversation relies on you know what can the school district do right. better. But but my question is, and you kind of touched on a little bit with the um, you know the the the, the involvement that, that's needed with parents and families and all the other things. What can the community do to help District ninety five? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, the first thing that I'll share is we've done a better job just in this month of July of getting the positive word out of controlling our story. Um, you can follow us on um, on Twitter at CES 95C and on Facebook, Carbondale Elementary School District number 95. And as people follow um, and as we do a better job of getting the word out, um, when people think they know what's going on and they share things that they believe are happening, I want people to be able to share what's actually happening. I want them to know what's going on in our schools and be able to say, that's not quite true. You know, there's something good going on at Carbondale Elementary School District 95. Have you heard about their band? Have you heard about their orchestra program? Have you heard about their AT program? Um, have you seen their facilities? Um, I think, you know, us being able to get that positive word out and having the community share it, uh, because a lot of the things that people think are not actually true. And a lot of the things, the perceptions that are out there are not actually reality. Um, so as a, once again, as a school district, we're doing a better job of getting the positive word out. Um, and as we get that positive word out, if other people can share it, um, that'd be amazing. I've met with realtors uh, recently um, just to talk about what we can do to help them to know what our schools actually have in them. Um, and my word to realtors is I'm not uh, expecting them to sell quote unquote Carbondale because that's not necessarily their job but um, when people ask questions I would love for them to just bring them to our buildings mm -hmm. and let us walk them around and let people make their own decision uh, because an informed decision is the best decision and I have a firm belief that if they see our schools and compare them to others and they see our programs and compare them to others it's going to be hard for them to not think that Carbondale is the best choice for them. And in addition to your social media outlets you also have an app as well. We do have an app, um, Carbondale Elementary School District 95. You can look on Google Play or um, the iTunes Store, uh, and it links right to our website. You can see our calendar of events. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a really good opportunity for people to know what's happening at the school district. Um, you know, we are a district that serves a community, um, so it's important that our community is involved and they know what's going on and that they can speak to what we do. 
Great. Lots of good information. Very exciting time for the elementary school district. Mr. Booth, anything else you'd like to mention? Anything we forgot to ask you? You know what? I feel like it's not only an exciting time for the elementary school district, but it's an exciting time for Carbondale. Um, my biggest goal is to bring a, a K through 12 alignment. Um, Carbondale is is um, an interesting community. In fact, in the fact that there are different school districts all feeding into the high school, but I feel like the more that we can align our curriculum and our content and our expectations, um, the more prepared our students will be when they do get to the high school. So, um, the best part of this job is that I still get to impact the high school. And any good work that we do in the elementary district will have an immediate impact on Carbondale Community High School and this community as a whole. So, I'm looking forward to continue to serve it great looking forward to the start of the school year hey, it's hard to believe go. it's almost year yep, here we go <laughs> looking forward to it thanks Dan. great thank you and we're thanks, going to take a short break and we'll be right back Good morning and welcome back to Talk of the Town. This is WDBX FM Carbondale. Thanks so much for listening. And we do have a special guest in studio, Pastor Christopher Swims from Hopewell Missionary Baptist Church. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Well, thank you so much for having me, Amy. I appreciate it. And we are continuing the theme this morning with Back to School. Hopewell is getting ready to host a Back to School Bash on Saturday. It's coming Saturday from 11 to 2. How many years have you been doing this? We've been doing this over 10 years. It started off just something that we did in-house um, that we did with our kids at church and we would have a little fashion show and give out school supplies but then we saw that there was a greater need in the community um, so we started doing it community-wide and so last year we gave out over over 600 so we made it a goal this year to do a thousand backpacks so we are excited that we met our goal of a thousand backpacks and we start stuffing them tomorrow night Great. And what types of things will the kids be able to do at this back-to-school bash? Well, they will be a bounce house. There's going to be dinner safari is going to be there. Um, SIU is going to be there giving away, uh, not giving away, but doing um, um, school physicals. Um, identity kits will be there. I mean, it's just going to be so many different things going on. It's going to be really good, really good. It can be really overwhelming to send the kids uh, back to school. Um, that comes with a great expense a lot of times. It does. And for some families, that's not in their budget. Right. And so this is kind of a one-stop shop right. for a lot of families. Exactly. So imagine if you have three or four kids. The average backpack, I think they say, is between 40 to $50. And sometimes that could just be the backpack alone if you want a good one that will last them a while. And uh, once you start adding the supplies, you can... It's almost like grocery shopping. Um, so we, our prayer is that this will be a great help to not just the students, give them that confidence to going back to school. Every kid likes to go back to school with a nice backpack and, and the latest supplies, but to be able to help to the families as, as well, um, that we take take off a little bit of that financial burden. And it's also a fun atmosphere with yes. different activities that yes. you folks have going on. Yes, yes. So we always try to keep it, um, you know, keep it simple. They come in, and we'll have food, different things going on. But if they just want to come and get the backpacks and leave, that's absolutely fine. But we would like for them to take advantage of all, some of the other different things that we have there. They can be able to sign up for the after-school programs at the Boys and Girls Club. A rep from, from there will be there. Um, NAACP will have a table to register to vote. So it will be different things going on. State Farm will be there. I'm always encouraged. 
our college students, hey, you need renter's insurance if you have an apartment. <laughs> so State Farm will be there. So we'll have some a little bit for everybody. Um, but again, if they just want to come in, just grab those things and go, that's absolutely fine. But it'll be this coming Saturday. August the 4th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Hopewell, and that's 400 East Main Street. And I'm assuming the earlier you come, the better likelihood you have of getting the actual right. pack yes, because <laughs> it's, it's first come, first serve. So once they're out, <laughs> we're out. And as far as donations for the backpacks, is that something that your church has foot the bill, or has the community really come together? The community has really been a blessing. Different organizations um, have, you know, taken on different projects to have a drive. Um, people, I mean, just people, uh, just some of everywhere have been giving, um, making sure we have what we need. And so we are just we are just overwhelmingly blessed by that, and just so thankful that people uh, would be mindful of doing it for us when there's other things going on, or they can keep it and do their own thing, but they decide to help us. And there's so, so many people the name, I don't want to call names that I mess up and forget, uh, but it was just it's just overwhelming, just the, the way that people have responded and helping us, and stuff is still coming in, so we're thankful for that. Yeah, is, that's what I was going to ask, is there still a need? So if people are out there, and they, they they, they still want to contribute backpacks or, or supplies or whatever. Yeah, supplies. Still? still the need for supplies. Uh, we'll have that list up on our social media page um, by the end of the day. But we start stuffing everything um, tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Hopewell. So, you know, anyone, the more the merrier. I mean, it's a thousand backpacks. That's a lot um, to be able to stuff. But we got everything set up to make it a smooth process. But if people are willing to come out and help to do that, that would be greatly appreciated. But, yeah, supplies, we're still taking supplies as well. What's the reaction like? like from these families that come and get the backpacks and school supplies oh just grateful uh last year there were people already in the parking lot like nine o'clock just wait waiting patiently and it was it was hot that day not as hot but they said hey we'll, we'll wait all day <laughs> we'll do whatever we have to do so just realizing the gratefulness of people's heart to be able um to be receptive and um you know not see this as a handout but a hand up of you know of helping um so it always brings us joy to be able to, to see the gratefulness and the thankfulness of people that come and get it and so if you're if someone's listening out there that <clears throat> does have a need is there what do they need to do? Just just show up? Is just there, show up. Okay. That's it. Just no show qualification, up. No qualifications. No qualifications. No questions asked. Involved. We just want to be a blessing. Okay. And it really sounds like it's a community effort. It's not only a Hopewell no. event. It sounds like it really takes a lot of community partners and yes. just local residents who have all pitched in to make this possible. Absolutely. It has been. Um, the response from different organizations to assist us in what we're doing, um, just coming to volunteer. Some people who are, you know, not even members of Hope Well, they go to another church, but they just want to be a part of what we're doing. You know, just different churches being willing to help. Say, hey, do you need extra hands? Do you need extra money? What do you need um, to make this thing a success? So we're always thankful for that and realizing that it's not just about one church. It's about us coming together um, to do what we need to do for our community. So I'm just very, very thankful for that. And when you started this a couple of years ago, I mean, did you ever think it would get to this point where you're helping hundreds of families in the Carbondale community? No, not at all. What we what we were doing 10 years ago, just in-house with our kids at church and the fashion show turned to something huge like this that we never, it was never in the plan. Um, just as things were going on and we just saw a need, we said, hey, well, let's try it and see. And just, then just from there, it just exploded. So we're excited. It, it, can, it can be overwhelming with the, <laughs> the shopping and everything, just trying to organize everything. But we have a great team at church that's been, you know, just all hands on deck, people willing to help. Um, people, even yesterday after service, was there. It's about maybe 4 or 5 o'clock, just making sure everything was set up. The supplies are out. Um, so it's overwhelming, but just the joy that we get um, from the actual event and just the response from the people is just it, it helps us to live out our vision of bringing help to our city, restoration to our community, and hope to our world. So we're, we're this is we love this. We love it. And this is something you'll continue on for years. Oh to come. my gosh, <laughs> yes! I hope this will be a legacy after I'm gone or whatever that we still continue to do this because we really uh, want to be a church that has our community in mind. If we're just here, um, just in the four walls of the church, we're not doing what we've called to do. We're supposed to be out, and so this is part of our mission. And so we love it. We love it. And if we have listeners who are just now joining us, we're talking about Hopewell Missionary Baptist uh, Church. They're back to school bash this coming Saturday yes. from 11 to 2. 11 to 2. And um, 
you can come out, receive uh, free backpacks, uh, free school supplies, yes. and uh, take care of a lot of important things that kids yes. need to have ready to go yes. for that first day of school. Yes, yes, yes. With identity kit, dental safari, um, screenings, all of that good stuff. So it should be re- literally one-stop shop to come and get all those things and knock it all out in one day. And... Um, Anything else that people need to be aware of? Any way that people can get involved and help out? Yes. Starting tomorrow, um, July 31st, Wednesday, August the 1st, and Thursday, August the 2nd, we're going to be stuffing the backpacks at Hopewell in our fellowship hall from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. You don't have to stay the whole two hours. If you come and give 30 minutes or an hour, whatever, we would greatly appreciate that. It's going to be organized and just follow just real smooth transition and get everything in the backpacks and get everything set up uh, for Saturday. So any help that people can give in that will be greatly appreciated. And why is it so important to get kids off on the right uh, foot, I guess, if you would, um, for that first day of school? Yeah, I think this has a lot in boosting the child's confidence. You know, you walk into school, you have a new backpack, you got your supplies, you're ready. You're ready to start the school year all fresh. And you know, for some who families, they may have multiple children, or they may have, the families may have hit a hard time and they may not be able to do that and um this will be a help to them you know to start that new year off with the bang and just really hopefully to be able to keep it going that same way the whole school year so we just hope that it brings confidence to a child to walk in there to give it all they have no matter what may have happened last school year it's a brand new school year fresh start get in there do what you have to do and just get it done and once again how many backpacks do you have available for the kids a thousand a thousand. Yes, that's so what we're we'll giving out. We'll be able to out. help one thousand local families. Yes, so we're getting out a thousand. So this is the biggest that we've ever done. And so we are excited. We've been working all year. We're catching backpacks on sale. Members have purchased some. People have donated. So we're we made our goal like last week. So we're really excited about it. That's awesome. And is there anything else you'd like to add? Maybe we forgot to ask you? No, nothing I can think of, Amy. I think you can go to our website, HopewellMB.org, or follow us on social media, HopewellMB, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you can be able to get the flyer, and we'll have the school supply list up later on today as well. And once again, it's first come, first serve. First so come, first serve. So you want to arrive early, <laughs> yes. if not 10 or 15 minutes after right. the start. Doors will open at 11 o'clock and we'll start bringing people in at 11 to go through, get the backpacks, check out the vendors. We're going to have some food, hot dogs, hamburgers, things of that nature. And then we'll have some outdoor activities going on as well. And how long does it approximately take for a family to get through the entire fair? You know, that's a good question. I don't know. I'm so busy running around most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never taking a note to see um, how long it takes. It's not that long, though. Literally, it's really not that long. Um, I think the weather be I think around you know, like 90 degrees so so it'll be a little warm mm-hmm. so be patient with us we're going to get people in and out as quick as we can great lots of good information yes. i just can't believe we're talking about back to school oh my gosh i know i know <laughs> it's coming it's coming all right well thanks so much for joining thanks. us thank Pastor you for Smith. having me i appreciate it and best of luck with the back to school bash absolutely thank you <laughs> and gary anything else you'd like to add maybe something i forgot to mention no, it's uh, you know, it's a, it's kind of slow this week in Carbondale. It's, it's kind of the calm before the storm, right? Right, as we're getting ready for back to school and SIU students mm-hmm. moving back, so um, it's kind of like you said that calm before Finishing the storm. Up some improvements downtown. And, yes, um, uh, how's everything right. going with the streetscape mm-hmm. project? Yeah, it's, it's. Uh, I think they're just a little bit behind, but uh, they should be. Uh, you know, the target date was August tenth. They're going to be really close to having it wrapped up, but uh, it'll be wrapped up enough that I think the inconveniences will be at a minimum. And uh, I've seen a lot of posts on social media um, with businesses who have already had their front of their building taken care of with the streetscape um, project and it's been a really positive response and I know the folks that um, are now going through the construction project uh, process it's kind of some growing pains Mm -hmm. but uh, hopefully those will soon be resolved and everyone will see a beautiful downtown exactly we appreciate everybody's <laughs> patience it's, it can be painful at times going through it and, and a little bit inconvenient but i think the end product is is worth uh, you know any aggravation that, that folks might have endured during the process so we we appreciate everybody's help with that so if anything i think we all feel positive and ready to take on uh, the work week a lot of good things going on in yeah, carbondale absolutely all right well thanks so much for listening and we'll talk to you next week
I'm Brian. At 58, doctors told me I had the heart of a 37-year-old man. They told me that after my heart transplant surgery. If you're a smoker, here are some tips in case that happens to you. First, you have to quit smoking before you can get on a list for a transplant. So quit now. And never feel sorry for yourself. I don't. I only feel sorry for that 37-year-old man. Developed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. For help quitting, call 866-QUIT-YES or visit quityes.org.